Welcome back to another edition of In the Weeds with Eichard and Layman, now presented by our good friends at Riverwind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience, and there are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino, but it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including Blackjack, Blackjack Match Roulette, and Teddy's favorite, Craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts. And to learn more about their gaming promotions and entertainment options, all you got to do is visit Riverwind.com. Riverwind Casino, simply the best. Close football game between Oklahoma and UCF. Ted, we have picked two two concepts to dive into. We're going to take a look at UCF's sprint draw play and, and why it was so successful for them in this game. And then we are going to take a look at Gavin Sacha scoring that touchdown on split zone. Are you ready to dive in, sir? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Well, um, are- are you ready or are you? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do okay. it. This is a, uh, it's an interesting concept. This is an old school play. I haven't seen anyone run this play in a really, really long time. Um, when if you have a mobile quarterback like they have in Plumlee, you move the pocket a lot. You do a lot of boot passes. You do a lot of sprint passes. Well, this is the sprint draw. All right. The quarterback gets a snap. It looks like he's scrambling out to his right, rolling out to his right on a sprint pass. That's the action of the quarterback. All right. The back, you see, just takes a little step to the side, opens up the arms to take the handoff, and the quarterback just kind of puts it in his belly. And the blocking across the front is unique. You don't see this in any other play. They just do like a little half turn to the side. And what they're doing is – kind of inviting guys to cross their face. And when they cross their face, they just latch onto them and turn them. And they hope that someone crosses face and the backers aren't used to when someone crosses face and gets in another gap and it messes up the gaps and the sprint action pulls everyone with the quarterback, right? So when people start crossing, there's usually a cutback or something in there that the the running back can find. Um, now I don't know what defense we're in here. It it looks like we are we're just adding a, a Mike backer here to the rush, and I think we're dropping the backside defensive end. Um, but he's not really he's not really going anywhere because I guess he's dropping off of the back uh, inside too. Is the would be the back inside, so he's not really flying out of there. Um, so as you see it unfold, and we jog forward a little bit here. You can see, you see how Stutzman goes kind of flying out of the screen to his left off of the sprint action to fill the gaps. Now, our Mason Thomas goes to get the quarterback. He's the defensive ends are in a very difficult spot here. He has to contain the quarterback on the sprint pass. So that's why on his initial out step, that's why he gets really wide because he's thinking in his mind, oh, it's sprint. I got to get out to contain it. So he widens out. So you can see that gap right there. And I think Stutzman feels that. And it's hard to know where the gap responsibilities are. I think Kendall Dolby is supposed to be in there and should be filling that gap. And then you have Kanick and his gap that he's blitzing. Then you have Isaiah Coe. It looks like he wins front side because he started up in in a head up zero. And then whenever you see on the backside, I think Stutzman should be in this backside A. And then we have like a little fold going on with the defensive ends because the inside is looping for contain because it's a blitz. Like all that stuff messes everything up to show you how it's supposed to fit. But it all, all shows that the sprint action when the quarterback is coming out, it pulls the defense that way. And a lot of times they counter all the way out the back. But the other spot that it hits, and you'll see this in a second, is how R. Mason Thomas thinks it's sprint and widens right there to the quarterback. And you can see that huge void um, right there. And Stutzman kind of ends up being in that spot. Um, We won't talk about what happens to Canik on this one. Don't look at Canik there. Now, the other thing that's interesting is 
whenever you see Key Lawrence, he comes up and he fits this really nicely. Okay. He's like, I think he's the deep safety and he comes up, sifts through the trash and finds it. But whenever you see Bothroyd, so the concept in defense is, and as a defensive end, he always has to keep everything inside of him, right? Everything is inside of him. So you can see how in the beginning he shuffles. Go back a little bit, Gabe, to where whenever he's first right here, okay? Freeze it right there. See how he's square. He shuffles, and then when he turns his shoulders to go right there, he loses contain and it's too late. If he waits and shuffles and is more patient, Key Lawrence makes this tackle here and minimizes the game. But as soon as he turns his shoulders, we've totally lost contain. So that's why you have to be really careful on the backside. You always have to expect it to come back to you. Now, this blitz, this is – I, if if they knew this play was coming, they would not have – this blitz would not be dialed up. This is not how you want to fit it. But um, this kind of shows you the end zone look of the unique blocking and how it stresses the play side defensive end and everyone else to widen because they're thinking sprint pass. So not only – I I think the key you're, – you're talking about R. Mason Thomas right here. Yep. And I think one of the things, just from an offensive perspective, that makes his job really difficult on this is first of all, no one else runs this play. This is the only, uh, I, have you seen anyone else run this play this year? I haven't seen this play since 2002. Yeah. At, now we ran a little bit of in Buffalo, right? Aaron Cromer, big sprint draw guy, but yeah. we, I, I mean, this is not a play you see. So even though, and Venables talked about it. like they repped it over and over and over again in practice. It's still not something that you're used to seeing, even though you like right. you get out there in game mode and you can rep it all you want in practice. You never see this yep. in a game. And the tough thing I think for our Mason Thomas in this situation is he, he is getting what looks to me like, Max protection, almost. Right now, you, in a perfect world, he's seeing through that tight end to the quarterback, right? And he's feeling that awkward turn of that right tackle's shoulders. But I could also see it feeling just like max protection to him so he converts into pass rush mode. Yep, and gets up the field. Gets yeah. up the field, right? And then all of a sudden, the tight end is batting you by and working. And that's why I think that tight end block on this play, him taking two essentially, because he throws the defensive end up the field and then goes and finds more work. And he's the one that gets Stutzman. Right. So that's kind of the key block to the play for me is just, Hey, this defensive end has been trained that if I look like I'm pass throwing him, he is going to turn. He's going to flip the switch into pass pass rush mode. Yeah. And you kind of use that against him. Yep. Now it, it's hard to get that action and just be like, no, no, no. Play run. Stay at the line of scrimmage. Stay in my cap. Like that's that's a that's a conflict they're putting that defensive end in. Right. And it's the same thing. If you go back to the beginning, okay, it freeze it right here. You see Jordan Kelly here, 88. He is because of the blitz over to the left, he is now, and you see Bothroyd is a dropper. So he's now looping for a pass rush to be the contained pass rusher. Okay, you see him loop out. But here's the thing. Like, he needs to recognize right away as he's looping, like a split second in, that this is run. And if he does that and he stops, he – you want a straight wall all the way across. You don't want all the different levels. So he should, right there, he should have already stopped. If you can go back like a half half of a count there, right there, he should already stop. But you see how he continues to go upfield and out and opens that all the way up, and he essentially, there's no longer a player there. He has yeah, to we, see that, we call that. We call that taking the easy way out, right? Yep. That's exactly where that tackle wants him to go. And the term you hear a lot is like, hey, you got to retrace. Yep. 
right? You got to feel that you got to retrace and, and you're it's, right. It's, it's incredibly difficult to do. I'm not suggesting that it's easy because he's inside and he's thinking he has to loop hard outside and fight uphill to contain the quarterback on the backside. So it's very difficult to do, but as you can see, like every tiny bit that he moves up the field and out, think about how much difficult more difficult that tackle is for key Lawrence. And the same thing with Bothroyd. Uh, he needs to stay square and not commit his shoulders right there because as soon as he does that, it's over. Key Lawrence can no longer make the play. There's nothing mm -hmm. to keep the running back in. So this one was in the in the third quarter, and the broadcast had a great view of it. So I thought it was it was beneficial to show this view, right? And they end up getting him on the ground. Nice gain. And then we can show the big one, right, the 54-yarder that they ripped off in the second quarter. And yeah. it, it's the same thing. Now, they don't have the pressure dialed up in this clip. I think but we you got see, a snap blitz on this one. Turn shoulders, right? It, it basically, when you see those shoulders turn, you see that from the offensive line. Ted, for me, with the prep they had coming into this game, it should just be like a it should be like a tornado siren sprint yep. draw going off. That's right. And you know, this one is interesting because we've actually got we're bringing the boundary corner. So you can see our Mason Thomas here is going into the B gap and Woody Washington needs to get his head on the swivel. He's coming off the edge, gets thumped uh, by the I'll, tackle. I'll, uh, I'll slow-mo that one. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, well, that's how an offensive lineman is supposed to treat a corner, by the way. Yeah. And you see Stutzman. Stutzman does the right thing. He's staying backside. So Coe's got the A. Uh, Stutzman has the front side A. Then you, um, who is as that co in the B and Canick does a good job. He fits in the C he's inside the tight end. That's off the ball and stripling is outside of him. So we're in our right gaps here, but stripling thinks it's sprint. So he releases and goes out wide to contain the quarterback. And you can see that window in between Canick who's inside that tight end in the C gap and stripling who's outside it in the d gap you could see that space there and that's, that's all it takes. a lot of space ted yep that's all it takes and it's it, that's why this play is so tough he's thinking oh my gosh here he comes it's sprint pass i gotta get out i gotta get wide and we're off to the races yeah this when there's when there's no one in the picture not good yep it's we're not what you're looking for manned up everywhere else uh, you know, just this is a good job fighting and scrapping. You see Key Lawrence is, he goes over to take Woody Washington, who's blitz, and he's covering his guy man-to-man -man, who's running down the field, and, you know, he doesn't know what's happening behind him. So it was a good job by him, and uh, Robert Spears Jennings just able to get this guy on the ground on the one to, I, I think we may have forced a field goal here if not for the penalty. Yeah, I here's something I noticed on this play. What do you think Canick's saying to Stripling right here? What watch this? Watch <laughs> watch this uh, little subtle interaction between these two. That's funny. He's like, watch. dude, we're going to be on the Monday film. He he just turns. I'm not entirely sure what he says, but he, he turns <laughs> and says, "That's not what we were supposed to do, dude." You could see like his, one of his fingers comes out, like he's doing the shrug. Like, what happened, man? What are we doing? Yeah. Hey. And now credit to Key Lawrence for yeah, this is good. You know, get and now he goes after the ball, which hey, always appreciate. But you get him to step out barely, and yeah, you almost, you almost got the goal line stand. But yeah, it was a uh, sprint draw was was effective for them. Gosh, that's now, a lot I, of space, man. And I'll tell you, Kansas, be ready for it. They uh, got everything. They got everything, and I'm guessing they're going to have sprint draw uh, added in there too, because you know they have they have every other run known to man already. Why not put this one in just to yeah. just to make sure that you know we can um, we can defend it. You so. got anything else on the concept? Why it was so successful? It's just it's a weird play you don't see, and it's, it's you tough. see with how they block it's it's hard to fit if they catch you in the wrong call like if you're playing base kind of gap sound defense excellent but they caught 
they caught the Sooners bringing pressure both times. Yeah. Yeah. And it's even when you're running coverage, though, and you're just in a base call, it still becomes like it's a little bit different there because everyone will fight to cross the face of those guys that do the, the little half turn. And then as soon as that happens and someone and they turn them, there's a gaping hole there because we're out of gap. Yeah. All right. You ready to talk some split zone? Yeah. All right. Here we go. So this is, you guys will hear us talk about split zone quite a bit, right? And want to explain it really quickly. So I, I kind of characterize a lot of different things. I just put it under one giant umbrella of split zone. So there's multiple ways to do it. So in this clip, uh, the Sooners are motioning Austin Stogner in. They snap it. He is going back with this split action to block the end man on the line of scrimmage. And the zone blocking from the offensive line goes away from the split action, right? Now in this, it's a little different because they're in – it's almost like a bare front. They've got an outside. They've got their inside backer walked up out here on the edge. They're bringing 21 here off the, uh, off the edge as well. So the offensive line is zoning this direction and the split action goes opposite of it. Now there are different variations of split zone. So sometimes you'll see a lot of teams run it and this is, Oh, you runs it a ton where the tight end's kind of in a wing position where he's lined up here, right? And he does the same thing. Go cut the end man on the line of scrimmage or go get in a car crash, essentially. And then you'll see teams run it with, an, with two backs. So imagine another running back standing right here, and then this back will split the action, right? That's what a lot of people, I think, think of as true split zone, kind of like that two-back formation. You also will see it where it is a back end. Ted, do you call it the dot, the pistol? What do you want to call yeah. it? Dot, yeah. So you'll see you'll see a running back directly behind the quarterback in the gun, and then you'll see an offset back over here, right? And still, same split action, offensive line zoning away from the split action. So for those of you that have been wondering, now you know what split zone is. Congratulations. Now, you look at this concept, right? With the way that they are lined up, the pressure that they are bringing, you're going to see Rouse thinking, I've got this man. You've got Caden Green thinking, I'm working here. These two are working to zero. And this is where you have to be really dialed in if you're an offensive lineman. This guy, he's number nine. He's a safety. He's running sideways. He has Stogner man to man. You have to be able to recognize that in that situation, right? And I'm sure they worked on that in practice, anticipating, hey, if we get man coverage here, this guy's going to be running with him. He is not in the count. Traditionally, safeties, when you think about running plays, now there's exceptions to everything, but safeties are typically not the offensive line's responsibility a lot of the time right? He, they are usually free hitters where the running backs are supposed to make a miss or wide receivers are supposed to come in and crack those guys. So you look at this concept, you've got Rouse and Green working out. You've got Rame and Bird working to zero. You've got Guyton working here. And then Stogner is coming in motion, split zone, right? Now you'll see this guy coming off the edge. He is going to be held by Dylan Gabriel. This is why having a quarterback that is a threat to run is huge for your run game because of the hesitation it can cause in situations like this. They have to honor his ability to run. So when you look at how this unfolds from a blocking perspective, Whoop, boom, straight through. Okay, so you look at it. You see, this is this is something that a lot of people won't probably notice. Caden Green 
and Walter Rouse do a tremendous job of exchanging their two guys over here, right? D tackle that was over. Caden Green hits out. Little gap exchange comes out because of the pressure coming from the other side. It's very similar to what we talked about with Bothroyd on the sprint draw. He's coming back in here. And Caden Green, watch what Caden Green does. Not only does he recognize it, but he goes and ruins the guy's day. Oh, man. Oh, just on his back completely. That's physical stuff. I like that. Now, Stogner, car crash. Great job, right? Now, this is a good job by Sawchuck running through an arm tackle, right? Was it perfect? Was it blocked perfectly? No. But this is something that OU hasn't done a lot of this season is kind of run through the trash. And Sawchuck right here, the guy's got an arm on, he's got two hands on him, runs through the trash. Now, you look at what Savion Bird does on this play. I, I would like to see him be less measured coming off the football, but he recognizes this pressure that they're bringing, right? You've got pressure coming off the edge. This guy... Ted, he doesn't seem overly eager to try to get into the A-gap for, for some reason, right? When you're thinking, hey, this guy's coming off the edge. These guys are hitting a gap inside, right? So watch watch Savion. I, I use the term, take him farther than he wants to go, mm -hmm. right? So he does a nice job being there, knowing it's coming, right? He's given help. He's got his eyes in a good spot. They're working to zero. He turns him, and then... Right here, right, he takes him farther than he wants to go. And that's really the key to the play. Could it have been a little better? Could it have been a little more violent? Sure. But the finish is the key, and that's what creates enough space for Sacha. Now, Guyton is just eating zero alive. I mean, look at this. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, just, <clears throat> I mean, all up in him. But that's that's good execution, right? Great runs, they're not always going to be these gaping holes, right? But that's as good as they ran it all day, right? And that's yeah. the most explosive run of the day. And you think about, there's a moment, let's let's find it, right here. Who do we <laughs> think Sawchuck is looking at? I don't know. He's looking for anyone over there. And it gets even better. Watch this. I mean, this is a 30-yard run. He scores a touchdown. Did I do the, did I do the right thing? Was I... Was I supposed to score? He's looking. He's he's trying to find a teammate that's going to tell him good job. Like you did what you're supposed to do. It's okay. We could score here. I it's don't know okay. what they talked about. I you know, but uh, it was funny how that all played out. It was, but, and it was. It's just it's good execution of one of their core concepts, and it's kind of a creative way, right? Stogner starts out in the slot in this clip. They motion in men. And they get him on the run for the split zone action, which I'm sure that inside backer standing up on the edge over there was thrilled to see. Oh, but it's <laughs> it, it, it's good execution. And they're capable of more than this, right? That they can do or they they can do this more often. But yeah, that's that's what I got for split zone. I hope I I hope I educated some people. Well, I like it. I think uh and you'll see this, it's it's by far the most common play in college football these days, and probably in the NFL too. It's it's become everyone's bread and butter because everyone runs RPO off of it. Uh, you can do it on a bunch of different personnel groupings. It's really easy to see the picture. You can just count the box, see what you want to do easily, and... You run it against every front. It's good against pretty much every front. And you're going to see this. 90% of the schools out there will be running this play. No doubt. Now, maybe my favorite part of this clip, other than uh, it's hard. It's hard to decide whether I like Sawchuck giving that look to the sideline and then looking at his teammates like, was that what that's what I was supposed to do, right? What watch Dilly Gabriel on this play. Watch this, watch this little fake that he carries out. It is, I mean, it is award winning. 
Ooh. <laughs> the the fake at 21. But in all seriousness, look at the space. Him being a threat to run. I mean, it creates space, right? Yeah. And that's that's where successful runs happen. Like, look at all of this space. I mean, if you think if Sawchuck, it let's say, hey, he he peaks and Sawchuck bounces it. I mean, he can make money there as well. So that's why having a mobile quarterback, and that's why you got to carry out your fakes as a quarterback. It, I know it's boring. I know it's not the fun part of the position, but it can be the difference between a three-yard gain and a 30-yard touchdown. But yep. that's, that's – and if you're a quarterback, that's, that's part of being a team guy. So uh, beautifully carried out by Dylan Gabriel. I like it. And that's a really good picture – uh, over there of who is that is that oh Caden green just Kane choking green. choking the life out of that guy yeah 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 he he's a freshman he's gonna be just fine oh free oh man oh man full mount that's what they i, I wasn't a wrestler ted but that's what they call no that i'm thinking ufc what what do they call this position in wrestling and that where you start well it, that if you're in the ufc it means you're about to get choked out from the behind from behind <laughs> and yes in wrestling that's you're you're just getting the start there <laughs> was it t- tabletop i don't know i don't know what it, i never wrestled my parents didn't make me do it I don't uh, even but know what it's called anymore. a inexplosive run it made me happy how do you how do you think episode two of in the weeds went i like it good stuff i mean it's you know the the sprint draws a little it's unique so it's not it's not nearly as defined as some of the other things that we see are, but I think it's kind of cool to explain that concept a little bit more and just kind of how rare it is. And we don't see it from anyone else. At least we haven't seen it from anyone else yet. And when someone has success with it, gear up buddy. Cause you're probably going to see it some, uh, sometime down the road, if yeah. not in Kansas. And hopefully, hopefully that was a solid ex- explanation of split zone. Yeah. Everyone runs it. So you need to know it people. That's right. All right. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you really like this content, there is, there's a, there's a super thanks button. I think it's right about down that way. If you want to show your appreciation for us doing this, it would be appreciated. All right. We'll see you next time on in the weeds with Eichert and Lehman.